not a fan of these at-home derma rollers. And I'm gonna use this to show you why. This is a close-up look at an at-home derma roller device. These little needles actually get dragged across the skin, creating tiny little cuts and scrapes into the skin. This, on the other hand, is a stamping microneedling device. You can see how the needles go in and out of the skin. I'm using this banana to show how the different needling devices can impact the skin. On the right, I'm using the stamping device, and on the left, I'm using the derma roller in the proper way that it's supposed to be used. You can see the control punctures on the right versus on the left, how the needles drag across the skin. This just shows how most people use derma rollers in a pretty haphazard fashion. You can see how the skin can get really traumatized by dragging of the derma roller versus the stamping device is much more controlled. Derma roller use can lead to scars, hyperpigmentation, and infection in unsterile environments. What's up everyone, we're back. Dr. Maxfield, Dr. Shah, and welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, popular topic, we're talking about microneedling. This is one of my favorite topics, and I think I've fallen in love with it more. The more I've talked about it, the more I've done, the more I've seen. And maybe it's actually a little bit of like jealousy because I'm a little too dark to use the CO2 laser, so this is what I'm left with. <laughs> But I think it's a great option for a lot of different conditions and we'll kind of give you the whole rundown here. We're talking about all things microneedling. Should you be microneedling at home? Should you be microneedling at your dermatologist's office? What does microneedling even treat? All things microneedling. Here we go. Here we go. Microneedling is where you poke thousands of little holes in someone's skin. It sounds great, doesn't it? But it actually has some really unique benefits and we're just gonna go over the breadth of it today. So like Dr. Maxfield was saying, microneedling, you're essentially poking a bunch of tiny little holes in the skin. So the different devices that we have options out there, we can control the depth. So you can go to like 0.5 millimeter, which is gonna basically just break the epidermis layer of the skin to all the way down to like eight millimeters. I think like the Morpheus 8 gets all the way down to like eight millimeters on some of the hand pieces, which is outrageously high. But most of the time we're dealing between 0.5 millimeters in depth and two millimeters in depth, depending on what you're trying to target. All right, so everyone's microneedling. What does microneedling even do to the skin? So why would you want to poke little holes into the skin, right? I always say that your skin barrier is this thing that protects you and therefore you should protect it. But ultimately, by poking holes in the skin, it creates a controlled damage. And by doing that, it activates those wound healing factors in your skin and does what we call collagen induction. So by causing trauma, you actually induce collagen production in a controlled fashion. So as long as it's done in a sterile, clean environment when you're poking holes in the skin, can actually have tremendous benefit. Right, and that's what microneedling brings to the table itself. Now, here's the whole other arm of microneedling. We know that the skin is first and foremost, like Dr. Shaw said, a barrier. And half the battle of using active ingredients is actually getting them into and through the skin to be effective. So microneedling is also an awesome complementing tool to elevate other procedures. So you can use it with radio frequency, you can use it with minoxidil for hair growth, you can use it with PRP for hair growth, melasma, multiple other conditions, and it can elevate it so you have like not only better absorption, but plus this complementing mechanical side. It's a great team player. <clears throat> Excuse me? It's a great team player. Right, so the number one thing that actually stops your skincare products from reaching into the dermis or in the lower layers of the epidermis that you actually wanna see the benefits of them is that stratum corneum layer of the skin. And so by puncturing it, you can introduce new ingredients into the skin as long as you're being careful. Right, and that's the counter side to that whole second half. Sometimes this has been beneficial and sometimes this actually has been really deleterious. And so unfortunately, although some of the studies have shown that combining vitamin A serums or vitamin C serums and getting it past that stratum corneum and that skin barrier can elevate the benefits. There have definitely been some untoward immune reactions where not only do these ingredients perhaps cause a local immune reaction and even a granulomatous immune reaction to cause deposits under the skin, but some people actually can get maybe even sensitized to these ingredients and develop a true allergic reaction due to the increased penetration. And microneedling is actually something where there has been tons of research on it. So there's like hundreds of papers on the benefits of microneedling. So you can pretty 
pretty much count on it being an effective thing for your skin. So it's going to help with fine lines. It's going to help with some of those deeper wrinkles. It can help with stretch marks. It can help with melasma. It can help with other forms of hyperpigmentation. It can help with scars. It can help with acne scars, regular scars. So, so microneedling actually has tremendous benefits to the skin and something that a lot of people will see a benefit from. The other benefit of it is that a lot of other things that we do to the skin are not safe for darker skin tones or microneedling is safe for all skin tones. Exactly. So because it doesn't generate heat, it's not um, as risky to damaging or activating any of those melanocytes and causing that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now, the most important qualifier is it's safer. Even if you look at the studies of microneedling, uh, or there's some studies comparing it to different lasers and things like that, people do get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from this. Anytime you traumatize the skin, you might get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but it certainly is a safer option for those uh, with darker skin tones. So let's talk about the derma roller. <laughs> so this is something that Dr. Sunder was showing in her video, which I agree. The derma rollers, you're rolling them over the skin. It's causing more trauma than stamping is into the skin, and it's gonna lead to more abrasions on the skin. And like she showed, most people just go crazy with them. And it really depends on the depth of them. So you can find derma rollers on Amazon um, from 0.5 millimeters in depth all the way to like two millimeters in depth, which is pretty deep in the skin. And you really should not be at home creating that level of depth of injury to the skin because that's really where you're gonna get infections and lead to potentially scarring in people. That being said, there are some studies that show that derma rollers do help with minoxidil penetration into the scalp to help with hair growth. So there is benefits with it. My concern is that a lot of times people will use that same device over and over over and over again and that could potentially lead to infection. Yeah, and I think that's a conversation that we're routinely gonna have, especially with a lot of these at-home devices. I mean, there are some incredible at-home devices now, like radio frequency to home IPL to uh, microcurrent, which Dr. Shaw loves. You know, especially when it comes to microneeding, like Dr. Shaw was saying, it's effective and it's consistent. So it's it's almost like not a knock on, can it work? It's, it's just like, you know, can this be used safely and consistently at home? And as we've seen over and over on TikTok, if there's a way to use it wrong, somebody is going to do it and the question is like how many people and you know it, then it just kind of goes down that rabbit trail right so even i think uh dr portella mm -hmm. did a video on like how to properly microneedling or how to proper derma roll at home because we know that if it's done properly it's going to have benefits it's just that a lot of times people are not doing it properly you get a dangerous device in someone's hand and then you cause injury right so it can be a good device if used correctly and you use proper safety protocols that means cleansing the skin, making sure you're using a new device every time or changing the device out pretty frequently and making sure that you're not derma rolling dirt and things into the skin, making sure that after you've injured the skin, you're not applying potentially infectious agents to the skin, like for example, getting into like a dirty pond or something like that, right? So it's just like the pre, the during care and the post care that's actually really important with these devices. It all matters. Tremendously, it all matters. That's why when you talk about things like even fillers, people are, are obsessive and they're crazy about the safety of it. They're crazy about like keeping everything sterile and clean because you don't want to introduce infection. It's very important yeah. to be very careful with your skin. So I guess we've kind of agreed that dermal rollers are inferior to the derma pen options then, which is the next right. type of device. So the derma pen or these stamping devices are how we perform microneedling in the office. It's one plunge down, up, one plunge down, up, one plunge down, up, where you don't see that dragging on the skin. And then you get a controlled amount of depth into the skin. So the stamping, I do agree, is a much better option for the skin. It's just more gentle, more consistent. And then again, you know, it kind of comes with size control too. I think with the derma rollers, because you can't adjust the size so readily, I think people use the incorrect depth on the incorrect area. Areas, where of course, if you're using a derma pen in the office or perhaps even have a di another device, um, it may be easier to change that depth as you're going to different locations. Definitely think the stamper is better. Definitely think that microneedling, as we do it in the office, is a better option than the derma roller. Now the question is, what about these micro stamping devices? Right, so then I guess even the next step there, I think in terms of safety, it would be the micro stamp devices. So these are a device, in fact, we have one here. We will use this as our demonstration. This one came from Cure. This is a great, they call it a micro-infusion system. And so what you have here is you have your container. I've already poured a little of their serum into this. 
And then you take a disposable head. In this case, it's a disposable head with, I think, 24 karat gold needles. Um, and then you let the serum infuse into the needles, diffuse into it. And then once it's ready, you have this disposable head and you stamp it. Now, this one has the 0.5 millimeter depth. So it's kind of the same safety and depth in terms of like the lowest grade derma roll or derma pen. So the, the advantage of these micro infusion devices is that they poke through that stratum corneum. I would still be careful around the eye with these because this is the thinnest skin on the body. So you will get deeper penetration with this. But when you're using it on the rest of the face, you're breaking that stratum corneum and then you're able to infuse ingredients that a lot of times have difficulty penetrating the skin. So just like when you see those micro dart patches from like Hero Cosmetics or Sit Sticka, the idea is that by, by creating a little bit of an opening in the skin, you're able to in introduce ingredients more effectively. Effectively. So this will definitely work and there have been studies to show that this will definitely work to help your products penetrate better. But how often are you changing these tips out? So I think is like you don't want to share this with somebody else. You want to make sure that you're cleaning the skin before because they do come in like a sterile packaging. So if you're if you're changing it out frequently, you're cleansing the skin before and afterwards, and you're not going too deep, especially around the eyelids, this could be a product that you're actually going to see some benefit with. But I'm still hesitant about the risk and making sure people are using these properly because if the education is not there, then, I, then I'm worried that like people would use them incorrectly. Exactly, and I totally agree with that because I think I kind of get excited. I think I get more excited than yeah, you. you love this stuff. I love you the at-home devices because I, I think, honestly, I just love the tech and I love the idea that people can have these things available to them because honestly, they're kind of hard to come by. The, the safety thing is always there because we just see people doing very irresponsible things. And so, you know, if we're gonna have nice things at home, <laughs> just be a grown up about it and use them correctly, you know? This is why we can't have nice things. No, I mean, that's why I'm a big fan of like LED masks at home and, and other devices like radio frequency devices at home. I do think they have benefit and I, we do want to empower you to do things at home, but just do them safely. So just watch this video and then you'll know how to do them safely. I, th I think this is a good option if you want to help to infuse your skincare products better. Make sure you're changing out the tips regularly. I mean, I still, I think most people, I want to make sure they're using it correctly. This is something I'm excited about, but I'm more cautious and hesitant <laughs> then you are excited. Like he's super excited about this. And I'm like, ah, I like it because I know it's going to work. But I also am hesitant because I want to make sure people are using it right. Yeah, totally agree. Cautious optimism. Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe I'm cautious optimism. You're like cautious skepticism. I'm usually optimistic though. You are I'm very general. optimistic. And that's why I'm late for everything. <laughs> well, they say optimistic people are late for things because they assume they have more time than they do. Is that yeah. really? No, it's true. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so that pretty much covers the range of what's available at home. So let's talk about what we do in the office. So we have microneedling devices um, at both of our offices um, that we do on our patients and we both have microneedling performed on ourselves at some capacity and some point in our lives. The idea is that you have this um, battery powered device. Sometimes they plug in, but most of the time they're battery powered and they stamp into the skin and we actually control the depth on these devices. So if you wanna go over potentially the nasal bridge where there's not a lot of skin between the bone, you may want to use a more shallow depth like 0.5 and if you're looking at like the deeper areas on the cheek or a really thick oily gland sebaceous gland nose you may want to go with a deeper depth maybe one millimeter sometimes two millimeters to really reach where you want to reach with these devices to get that collagen induction and so we control it based on where we turn a little knob we control where it is on the face at each stage of it and we run it over sometimes one sometimes two sometimes three passes over the skin depending on how aggressive you want to do and you will have pinpoint bleeding with this device because you're puncturing holes into the skin this is a more aggressive treatment because we're doing it in the office and we're cleansing the skin first. We're use, it's a one tip use. We throw out the tip after we're done using it. We're controlling the depth and then we're making sure after you're done that you're not putting anything crazy on your face other than sunscreen. Real gentle care after you're done. Take it easy. You know, with this, you've heard the list of the things it can be helpful for. I mean, these are some very difficult things to treat. Stretch marks, the appearance of pores. This is one of the things I think people get more consistent results from. It can be helpful for this. Um, acne scars, I mean, hair loss, melasma. This is like, this is, 
is like the who's who list of difficult conditions. And so microneedling is an incredibly useful adjunct of treatment for this. It's something that you should and could explore regardless of your skin tone. I think it makes a huge difference. Even like you said, you mentioned, and we didn't mention in the beginning of the video, is like pore size. It makes a big difference on minimizing the appearance of your pores. I like that so many people can use it. I like that it's pretty well tolerated. Depending on, you know, your your uh, your ability to tolerate pain, most of the time we're going to numb you. Uh, I was actually going to ask you this. So you, you numb. So we numb here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, before. But I've seen it done unnumbed. Um, so it depends on, you know, how aggressive that you want it. What your pain tolerance is. Um, but we can make it pretty comfortable for you, especially with numbing. We actually have nitrous oxide to also reduce some of the anxiety and have a little bit of analgesic effect as well. So, you know, you can have it be very tolerable for you. What's the downtime with microneedling? So it's pretty dependent on person and aggressiveness. Uh, so this, along with everything else, will be personalized. It could be anywhere from a day to a week, just depending on how much you're trying to treat. Right. So again, minimal downtime compared to other procedures. I would say day one, you have pinpoint bleeding. Day two, um, mostly just like redness um, occurs afterwards and some texture. And you get a little bit of an exfoliant effect where your skin's a little bit flaky dry for maybe like three to five days. And then about in a week, I think you're, you're pretty much back to baseline like Dr. Maxfield said. If you want to check out this product from Cure, we'll put a link down below. But again, use with caution. So that's pretty much everything on microneedling. We'll talk about specifically microneedling when combined with radio frequency in another video because that's a whole nother can of worms to unfold there because there's more complications but also more benefits with that. I think microneedling, if you're new to procedures and you're like, I want to get a procedure done by a dermatologist, but I'm very hesitant, like I, I don't want too much downtime, I'm afraid of the risks. I think microneedling is a very good starter procedure into the cosmetic world and worth checking out. Very pro microneedling. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Yep. We appreciate you as always. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. All right. See you later.